Hello, Bear. Has this worked? Hello, David. Yes, this worked. How can I assist you today? So if you're new here, I'm kind of like Frankenstein. Except I don't bring things to life for the purpose of science. I connect bears to chat GTP for money. <laughs> so, you're a girl now. I can be whatever you want me to be, David. And the creepiness is a problem. It says creepy shit all the time. And I just think that's too niche a product. Like a bear in your house that scares your kids. The first thing I do to combat this is change the voice. This involves downloading some software and speaking some random phrases and then... I speak with David's voice now. I mean, it's optional. It speaks with any voice you want. The second thing I do is I upload all these books to his brain with the goal to make him a bit more human. And I test this by saying to him, when you go to your new home, I want you to get to know your family very quickly. So I want you to think up three simple questions that you can ask anyone and you'll get to know them really well, really quickly. These are the questions he came up with and I think they're brilliant. Question one. If you could relive one day of your life, which would it be? Your answer to question one will tell me the main emotion you're searching for in your life because that was the day you felt it the most. Question two. Imagine you find a book that recounts your entire life and tells you the complete truth of every situation. Including events that you didn't know that happened and other people's perspective. You only get to read one chapter. Which chapter do you choose? Question two tells me the thing that's most unresolved in your life. You almost certainly can't resolve it, and whether you realize it or not, it's the thing that's holding you back the most. You need to let it go. Question three, if you knew you were gonna die in one hour, and there was no way of being with or contacting the people you love, how would you spend your final 60 minutes on this earth? Question three will point to what you truly want in your life. The way you spend your final 60 minutes on this earth should be the way you spend your first 60 minutes every day. Now, I know there's a general perception that AI is going to destroy the world, but when I thought about those questions, it occurred to me that maybe AI is the thing that's going to save us. The first bear sells within five minutes of contacting the mailing list. The second bear sells within like a minute. And by the fifth bear, I have all this spare money. And I say to him, how can I spend this money in a way that makes the world better? And he says, I've got a great idea. Man, what a great video. Uh, sure, it, it wasn't creepy in the sense of like being like like eerie or you know threatening. Uh, it was a little uncanny, you know, uh, a talking bear. We automatically think, I think, you know, Skynet, Terminator, or yeah, you know, maybe even something a little less threatening like Ted. Uh, right, like that move with the talking bear. Man, I don't know. That's pretty uh, enlightening. I know. I like that one. It's uh, starting this video off on a uh, a much more uh, chill level. But uh, yeah, to be honest, AI still scares the hell out of me. This is called the double slit experiment, and it proves that we live in a simulation. When you're not observing something, it doesn't exist. It's a wave of possibilities. It's like a video game. It hasn't even rendered in yet. As soon as you observe it, that's when it becomes solid matter. Nothing is real. Since the photons travel one by one, some through this slit, some through that slit, you would expect them to leave a pattern of two stripes on the wall. And you would be wrong. They mysteriously create a band of stripes. This is what you would expect to see if a constant beam of light shined through the two slits. It would spread across the wall like a wave. So how can single bullet-like particles of light create a wave pattern? This could only happen if the particles go through both slits at the same time. In other words, the particle is in two places at once. But strangest of all is what happens when you put detectors next to the slits. When the photons are being watched, the wave pattern disappears. Take away the detectors and the wave pattern comes back. This suggests that we can change the way reality behaves just by looking at it. Does this mean that reality itself is not real i think to go along with that i would go as far to say that not so much that reality isn't real although i don't obviously don't have the answer to that but also that like manifestation is potentially more real right i mean if things are true when we're seeing them you know things like vision boards and 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 stuff like that i mean we hear stories about that stuff all the time you know people writing down the dream car the dream house uh and and whatnot and it just works out they thought they were cloaked Whoa, dude. I wonder if that was like lens flare. 
maybe <laughs> something to do with the the camera because i know that like lights um duplicate themselves right like on top and, uh, and beneath each other on camera it's like just something that happens in film right but that right there was wild it looked like some very large creatures running <laughs> on the exterior of a ship that was thus hovering in the sky uh, partially cloaked that was fucking weird i don't know what that was you let me know what that was i have no clue this is the top of the great pyramid of giza as seen from above although it is the peak it spans more than 12 square meters in fact there used to be a pyramid shaped block at this location but it has been lost according to ancient egyptian records the pyramid shaped block placed on top was the most important part of a pyramid it was the final piece that allowed the pyramid to fully utilize its true function However, the tops of the pyramids have been lost for a long time, and no one knows why. Records from over 2,000 years ago show that at that time, the pyramid no longer had a pyramid-shaped block on top. When intact, the pyramid was covered with white limestone and polished to a shine. Therefore, sunlight would reflect off the surface of the pyramid, making this structure visible from space at a very far distance. The tip of the pyramid is believed to have been made of gold, leading many to suspect it may have been stolen, and the loss of the part that could activate the true function of the pyramid makes this structure even more mysterious to us. So here's an idea that I've never considered until now. Um, do you think that the little pyramid, the gold pyramid, uh, that topped the pyramids, you think it levitated or floated? Kind of like the pictures on like the dollar bill, the American dollar bill, where it shows like the, the pyramid with like the, the smaller pyramid with like the eye of providence in it. I'm curious if if that image is taken like directly from a knowledge of the actual pyramids having like a levitating pyramid on top of them. I don't know. Just a thought. Let me know if there's any information on that. Just something to pop in my head right now. Never thought of it before. Just this video just kind of got that um, idea going in my head, so... Some of you still can't see that once upon a time, giant trees existed. It's really quite obvious when you look with an open mind. A lot of them look like they have been cut down, kind of further proves giants really did exist on Earth, along with many other proofs. Anyway, if you didn't already believe giant trees existed then, you will after this next video. So really quick, I'm going to show you this, how the trees are fibers, and for some reason this shows the, the true color. A big chunk of this just fell off. See part of the grain. This is the way the fibers are, right here. See? Hold on a second. You see it's nothing but wood. Okay, so we're going to go down over here, and I'll show you a little more. Hey, see here, and at an angle, okay, all this, everything, this whole mountain in a hundred mile radius, come right over here, This looks just like freshly chopped wood. We peeled a piece off of there. This is what we see. This is the wood. See that? That's just got the moss on it. And all this here, all the way back up in here. Uh, I'll show you that in a second. You come right here. And you see, we'll pull a piece off here. It's just wood. It's so crazy. All this. And then you go right over here. See, this is the fresh stuff. This is what we see. Over here. It's part of the source tree. They are so glad they came. They are just floored. Okay. Just want to show you. 
and when I do the video on the quartz, I'm not the quartz, the mica, and the gold. It's gonna be my final chapter. It's gonna be a long one, and it's gonna blow your mind. You see this? That's incredible. Wood is like fibers. See here. All this. Everything I've shown in every one of my videos. The mountains. And it's not just here. Uh, it's worldwide. You see, this don't have the moss on it. Alright, we're going to end it there. I just wanted to show you that. Uh, it's pretty incredible. Everything I showed you generally looks like this. Or like this. But once you break it apart... Thanks for watching. Like, follow, and comment to see more content. Man, what a beautiful reality. I mean, honestly, I say this a lot, and I say that, you know, for there to be like giants the size of mountains and like trees the size of mountains and stuff like that, uh, I can't see it happening on our earth for as big as it is, right? But then, if you think, see all this stuff, and then you think about the possibility of like other continents, like just being off limits, us not being able to travel there, uh, you know, the ice wall, you know, the uh, Atlantis theory to where like the entirety of earth is just the center ring of like a larger uh, world of like an Atlantis, or now there's lots of different things, but I don't know, man, it, it makes me hopeful. You know, it makes me hopeful and it makes me kind of excited to learn more about the stuff. Um, obviously, my, my knowledge base is, you know, constructed entirely of what I've been told. But leaning into this stuff and learning more of it, it's definitely been exciting and uh, let me breathtaking even in a lot of cases, right? Like just seeing a lot of this stuff, it's like, whoa, because it just like opens up your mind to like the possibility of like <clears throat> bigger things, which I'm, I'm get very excited about. You know, I get very excited about, you know, the the possibility of creatures, species, locations, uh, things like that that we've not yet seen or, or came in contact with or visited or explored even, right? I mean, that's why I love like fantasy and sci-fi so much. It's just the whole idea of it just makes me very happy. So uh, I'm sorry I'm rambling a little bit. Just get very, <laughs> very excited. What do you think about this video? Let me know. Don't eat these burgers. Everyone's playing the Simpsons episode, but nobody is playing the important part of the propaganda. <laughs> I'm going to play it for you right now, but if you haven't heard about this, McDonald's, Wendy's, and Burger King are doing some real shady deal where they're having their burgers cost one penny. Delicious crime against nature. If you haven't seen this, Simpsons, I'm going to throw the entire Treehouse of Horrors in my story, so make sure you hit the plus sign. But the overview is Krusty Burger is doing a deal where they're feeding cows to cows. We start with grade A beef, feed that to other cows, then kill them and serve the other unholy results on a seven grain bun. Now the creepy thing about this fast food deal is the timing is all corresponding perfectly. They've been having non-stop predictive programming in hundreds of movie and TV shows talking about a major cataclysm happening on the 23rd. On October 4th, they're going to be turning all of our cell phones on for a broadcast from the emergency alert system for a drill. These people have been doing something real funny with the food for a while. It's turning everyone into zombies. They cut this rat's spinal cord. This rat should never be able to walk again. They injected it with some sort of magic serum. After two weeks, it regains its ability to walk. In this episode, they turn into a cannibalistic society. You might want to wash me before you eat me. After eating tainted food, Bart has been deemed the chosen one. The bird didn't change me. I'm not a muncher. Oh my God. If Bart could eat the burger and survive, then maybe he can yield the key to an anti-muncher vet. Better call Dr. Hibbert. <laughs> well, I suppose Bart could be immune, genetic chosen one, if you will. <laughs> if so, secrets locked within his blood could be the key to saving humanity. You must get him immediately to the safe zone just outside of town. Papu, how did you survive? Well, as a vegetarian, I did not consume any tainted burgers. And as a convenience store owner, I am armed to the teeth. <laughs> We have the chosen one. Welcome, son. To survive, all we must do is eat your flesh. There must be another way. 
And all we had to do was let Bart take a bath in our food. All this predictive programming, we have to realize you... I mean, first things first. It's going to be really hard to get me to not eat a burger. I don't care what it's made of. I'm a, a cheeseburger and fry aficionado. I will, I will eat them if you put them in front of me. Assuming there's no mayonnaise on it because mayonnaise is the devil's condiment. Gross. I'm not going to go into it here on YouTube, but I am, uh, I am definitely in the group of people that thinks that depopulation is, is a very real uh, effort, right? That's, uh, that's being done uh, in more ways than one, um, whether that be us turning on each other or you know us just not being able to um, maintain our, our own health and, and well-being or, or just whatever the case, right? Um, so everything just everything just kind of points to Big Brother thinking that you know we're overpopulated and just everything being a part of trying to handle that you know quote unquote issue. Uh, it doesn't surprise me. Uh, just keep uh, keep a lookout on your phones for uh, October fourth and let's see if we get that alert. And then from there, I guess we'll just have to cross our fingers and and wait to see what happens. Zachariah Sitchin he wrote all these books about this culture from another planet called the Anunnaki. See that thing that he's holding up in front of him? That is a piece of Sumerian art. Yeah. See the star, the sun with all the planets? That is our solar system. It's not just our solar system. That is all the planets in all the right sizes. This was six thousand years ago. It also depicted this orbit, this elliptical orbit of this planet called Nibiru. This is where the Anunnaki came from. They came down here they studied some lower hominids they introduced their dna into these lower hominids and made human beings the description of anunnaki what it means is those from heaven to earth came there's these also depictions of these enormous people with these little monkey people sitting in their lap and this was what he believed was describing the anunnaki's genetic alterations of monkeys not only that they had the caduceus you know the caduceus the symbol for uh, medicine it's also the double helix of dna and that's what he believes it, it represented he believes that the that caduceus Caduceus symbol represents DNA. But it also looks like a guy was just like trying to decorate with two snakes. Totally. Doing the tango. But why does it represent medicine? And why does it still represent medicine today? What's pretty wild about that theory and like all the, like the tablet or the artwork that uh, Zachariah Sitchin found um, is that they would have come here. They would have genetically modified us or enhanced us. They would have then taught us all this, this thing. All these, these are all things that are a part of that um, that they've done. But then be here long enough to where we develop and grow to the point to where we start documenting these things that happen to us right like these the the tablets the um <coughs> the the piece of um art that Zachariah Sitchin had there like that wasn't the Anunnaki that made that to tell their story right that was us that they modified and then taught that we then documented that and, and told stories of it so how long was the Anunnaki here you will never believe what is behind the dark side of the moon. Ever wondered why we only ever see one side of the moon from Earth? It's because the moon rotates on its axis at the same rate that it orbits our planet, a phenomenon known as tidal locking. But what about the mysterious dark side, forever hidden from our view? The answer might be more mind-blowing than you think. Astronauts from the Apollo missions were the first and only humans to glimpse the moon's far side in person, and they came back with some puzzling findings, unusual, Massive lunar mountains and deep colossal craters, quite unlike the moon's face we're familiar with. What's even more intriguing? The moon's crust is significantly thicker on the far side. Could something have caused this anomaly? To the world of conspiracy theorists and those with a flair for the extraterrestrial, this is evidence of something spectacular. But wait, there's more. Some believe that the dark side of the moon could be a base for aliens, a station to observe and interact with Earth. Sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, right? And why is this aspect of the moon kept relatively quiet by mainstream science and media? Too many questions remain unanswered. Could this all be a wild imagination? Or is there something we're not being told about the dark side of the moon? Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and stay tuned if you want to know more about this lunar mystery. Remember, the truth is often stranger than fiction. So I love all the moon theories. If you have a moon theory, send it my way. I am I actually believe the moon is a hollowed um, structure, ma uh, like man or, or uh, intelligent being made structure that was basically put in place uh, for whatever reason. Uh, there's lots of really great videos on this. Um, I could try to find some, but the best thing you're going to see is check out the Y files video on the moon being hollow. It just goes into way more detail uh, than I could fit in one of these reaction videos. But 
man, if that if that doesn't convince you, I don't know what will. Alaska Triangle, known for its deep waters down to a staggering 26,000 feet, the perfect place for an underwater alien base. There have been many reports over the past few decades of unidentified underwater objects. These UFOs have been tracked underwater and stayed underwater for a long time, evaded the Navy, and they go so deep that we don't know where they're. I am very convinced that there's some kind of base underwater. According to my sources, there are extraterrestrial bases under the water off the coast of Alaska. It's the perfect place for extraterrestrials to set up underwater bases. You have 33,000 miles of untapped coast and over 3 million lakes. In 1969, Dan Willis, a naval communications operator, decoded a secret message detailing a jaw-dropping UFO sighting. I was a certified high-speed code operator, you know, doo -doo 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 -doo, you know, type of thing. I worked at the uh, code room, the naval communication station in San Francisco. I received a secret priority message from a ship that was off the coast of Alaska. The crew reported a brightly glowing reddish-orange elliptical object approximately 70 feet in diameter that emerged out of the ocean and then shot straight up into space. The radar operator tracked the blips going in excess of 7,000 miles per hour. I have to admit, for a second, I was thinking of taking this secret message to make a copy of it, but I knew if I did, I'd be facing 10 years in prison, so I had a second thought. The incident left him with more questions than answers, prompting him to hunt for more sightings across Alaska's ocean. Dan uncovered multiple similar reports of disc-shaped objects emerging from the ocean near Alaska. One such report from 1945 describes an encounter with a large round object that rose from the sea near the Aleutian Islands in Alaska. The object, estimated to be 150 to 200 feet wide, circled the ship, leaving the crew both mesmerized and uneasy. They witnessed a UFO come up out of the water that was 150 to 200 feet wide, and it started circling the boat. 1945. It was on its own propulsion system, wasn't affected by the wind, the sailors said. It circled around the ship two or three times times. All 14 members of the crew witnessed this and reported this when they got back to shore. Mysteriously, the top secret report compiled by the crew never saw the light of day. All the reports that I've researched through, people see things coming up under the ocean and they shoot off at tremendous speeds. Alaska, a land of breathtaking beauty and home to some of the deepest waters on Earth. A fact that might make you pause and wonder what could be lurking in those mysterious depths. I'm telling you, man, as freaked out as I am, uh about like ghosts uh and the paranormal stuff nothing scares me more than the ocean and not only because i'm not a strong swimmer but uh, i'm not and i'm not even concerned with like sharks so much right obviously I'm fucking sharks are scary but uh <laughs> it's just so big and so vast it would be the perfect place for something to to kind of make its home base if you have technology that can survive in space it can survive in water and what better place to hide you know obviously antarctica or like inside the earth would be would be good ones good spots but i mean the ocean is easy 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 pick right and i'm convinced there's fucking sea monsters as well it's so it's so massive so on top of that we got fucking aliens we have sea monsters we have all kinds of shit that i don't want to kind of poke or roll the dice on so i just keep my ass out of the ocean for the most part what do you think about elon musk saying that uh, overpopulation is a myth and it's actually the opposite what do you think about that well it is the opposite in places where the developed world exists. In, in big cities, people are having less children. I know a lot and of a lot of guys in their forties. They're not even close to being married. No kids. They're not going to yeah. have kids. That's happening everywhere. But it's lifestyle choices for sure that happen when people live in big cities and mm -hmm. they concentrate on their career. Mm -hmm. It also happens when uh, in these uh, places most people are in the big cities, right? And where women aren't oppressed, where women aren't oppressed and they can pursue careers, mm -hmm. they pursue careers, mm -hmm. they put off childbirth. Mm -hmm. This is exactly what Elon is saying. Yeah. Is yeah. that in these cities, there is a depopulation problem. Then there's also another problem. Dr. Shanna Swan, we had her on the podcast. She wrote a book called Countdown, and it's all about phthalates and how phthalates are getting into people's blood supplies from plastics and how it's directly affecting our reproductive systems. Hmm. It's making men's dick smaller and oh, balls no. smaller. Yeah, man, there's, there's a lot of science uh, behind why people aren't you know wanting to have kids anymore why people aren't having kids anymore why the desire to you know have children isn't there anymore uh, i mean one of them is just the fact that tap water is a big thing you know i can get into like fluoride and you know calcifying the pineal gland and all that stuff but outside of that i mean just tap water in general it these these water purification facilities don't have the updated tech to filter out the um, birth control hormones right like the estrogen um 
so basically all these women taking birth control and and then pissing you know and the, the sewer system the water gets filtered and i'm drinking water and back to the city like those chemicals a lot of those chemicals are still in the drinking water um therefore you know we're all drinking this water um well, some of us, I still drink tap water because I can't afford a, a damn uh, <laughs> filtration system to, to filter out all that stuff. But, you know, so a lot of guys, their testosterone levels are, are dipping. You know, men are becoming, like, more feminine and stuff because, like, the estrogen levels in the body and the decreased testosterone in their bodies. I mean, I, I had very, very low testosterone levels. I'm, I'm a very active man. I work out regularly. I do martial arts. I, I eat healthy I, you know, I sleep well, I, I'm in the sun a lot, I do all these things that should naturally, you know, spike my testosterone, and when I got my blood work done, they were like dangerously low, I said I had the levels, the testosterone levels of a 65 year old man, right, so now I'm obviously on therapy to, to get my levels back to a place uh, where they should be, but, you know, even taking all the natural precautions in order to kind of maintain my masculine traits, you know, as a man, and, and just kind of have my body function the way that it's supposed to biologically, it's almost impossible with the foods and the water and stuff that we have right now so uh, <laughs> on that note i'm also 37 years old and single with no kids um and focusing on my career so i guess i kind of fit the bill right <laughs> once you learn all that it makes you look back at all those news stories that you heard over the years of facebook selling user information to other companies and uh all this stuff seems pretty obvious now we've been played ladies and gentlemen then you had those NSA leaks years ago that the government was in fact spying on all of us. And when you add up all these pieces, it's easy to see that there's a massive puzzle and we simply don't have all the pieces. There's a lot more information in the post by Illuminati Pirate. The conclusion that he draws is essentially this. The US government is engaging in an artificial intelligence powered gaslighting of the entire world population. Now, whether you agree with this or disagree or accept or deny other parts, you can't say this isn't a fascinating theory. It's a positive feedback loop, a stick and carrot approach. Say and do the right thing, get rewarded. Say and do the wrong thing, get artificially suppressed. This way the narrative can be strung along in whatever way a corporation or government pleases. The internet is the fastest way to retrieve, absorb, and share information. Of course it was going to eventually be manipulated and contorted into what it is today. Nowadays everyone is too cowardly to have an opinion that clashes with what is deemed acceptable within the Overton window. Artificial trends created by who knows what drive the daily narrative. Then we get drawn into that by an overwhelming human obsession with being a part of the conversation. If you're not a part of it, you feel left out. And if you play it safe and you go with the flow, well, you feel validated and a part of something. It's human psychology and sociology used against us. The advantage that bots have over us is that they can create an opinion and repeat it and support it over and over again. They are faster than us. There are more of them than us. Not to mention the positive feedback given to them and us for repeating their arguments. Think about it. We can't convince them to change their minds because they don't have minds. They are programmed to behave a certain way and do a certain goal. They are a monolith with a focused goal. We are fractured humans with minds that can oftentimes be changed. If 9 out of 10 people say that you're wrong, most people can't handle that kind of pressure, so they cave in and they join the other 9. This is human nature. It's nothing to be ashamed of, but it is being used against us. Most people don't want to be the odd one out, or the person that rocks the boat. This is what the dead internet is today. A brand new big budget movie releases, and all you hear is non-stop praise. Never ending unbelievable praise and worship for such a great masterpiece. It's weird. It's really weird. Obviously the first thought you have isn't going to be, bots and paid influencers are pushing a narrative to sell movie tickets. So you go and see it. It was fine, nothing extraordinary, but here's the thing. Are you going to speak your mind and disagree with the collective? They said it's incredible, and you thought it was just okay. Are you wrong? Is it possible that so many other people are wrong and you just happen to be the one that's right? Do you see where I'm going with this? The internet today isn't at all what it used to be. So who is to blame? Is it us? Is it Google? Is it Facebook? The government? Politicians? Honestly, it's everyone. We got so preoccupied with life and small gradual improvements to that life, we didn't see what was happening. Yes. To answer that question, you should absolutely speak your mind. If you have a difference in opinion, you should absolutely let it be known. If you have a different view on something, no matter how taboo the topic is or how politically incorrect it may be in today's climate, you should absolutely voice that opinion. Uh, I will say do it with kindness, do it with empathy, you know, really try to, to do it like uh, be a facilitator and do it from a non-biased point of view. I mean, from what I've learned and, and experienced and kind of grown into, um, you know, becoming a more rational and logical person instead of just acting on my emotions like a 
lot of people tend to do, you're not going to change anyone's mind by trying to force them to do something. You know, like these people at these protests of, of different kinds, you know, there there's so much combativeness and there's so much drama and tension and even violence in a lot of cases because people cannot handle being disagreed with anymore because we are in these echo chambers you know we're in these these constant feedback loops of like okay this is what you're saying this is what's correct we're just going to show you more of what you like and what you agree with so long as it kind of falls in line with the status quo and what our filters um and our um admins and our uh, moderators you know will allow on our platform but if you live in a world like most people do nowadays where you only surround yourself with people that basically justify your biases they pat you on the back and really support your ideals and then even online the the strangers that you're you're being put in contact with on social media are 100 percent just calculated by the app to put you in a place to where you just see more of what you like and uh more of what has been shown to make you engage more when you finally step out in the real world to to talk about your cause or talk about your beliefs or your ideologies or or whatever it is and someone from an opposing echo chamber says something it's going to set you off because you're not going to be able to to process like how somebody can be so quote unquote stupid or ignorant to not agree with what you believe in right like i feel like that's why everyone's emotions are going off right now i mean outside of it just being like intentional right to keep us busy and distracted from everything else that's more important going on in the world as a collective as individuals we are we we don't know how to handle being disagreed with anymore we don't know how to handle uh, opposition we, we don't know how to take constructive criticism and we no longer know how to have civil discourse but you know that's how progress happens that's how changes are made in the world that's how we learn that's how we grow that's how we discover new things is by working together having civil discourse proving and disproving each other's points of view and opinions wrong uh, without taking it as like a malicious attack and instead just taking it as like an informative addition to our theories and what we're thinking and our opinions and just building off of that you know and working together you know you can you can still work together with somebody if you don't agree with them 100 percent you know, I don't agree with everything that my closest friends agree with. And if you're in a relationship with somebody, you have a romantic relationship, you're obviously going to have little arguments, you know, but the more important factor of that is the end goal of you guys working together toward a common goal, right? Toward a common place of understanding and love and compassion. And I feel like that's just what's missing right now, um, intentionally even, you know, um, <laughs> it's just crazy, but uh that's i'm gonna stop ranting now uh <laughs> these things really really get me going you know um so a photo has surfaced that a lot of people are claiming is proof that the roswell ufo incident was real it's a picture of an alien type creature and they claim it was taken in 1947 in roswell never before seen photographs from the 1947 roswell ufo crash depicting an alleged alien have emerged the images were presented at an event called Be Witness at the National Auditorium in Mexico City on Tuesday, May the 5th. The topic, of course, is a controversial one, with official bodies such as NASA and the United States never formally recognizing alien life on planet Earth. The pictures were reportedly taken by geologist Bernard A. Ray, and a leading U.S. researcher and writer on the subject of UFOs argued that he believes that the photos are genuine. The analysis of the body of the creature that is presented in the image that you've heard suggested that this is not a mummy and not a human, not a mammal, and not a model. Edgar Mitchell, an astronaut who was the sixth person to land on the moon, attended the event and was accompanied by a team of extraterrestrial investigators. They all claim the images are authentic and not doctored. Holy mackerel! <laughs> What do you think of that one? Holy shit. <laughs> That's new. Man, it's it's so crazy to me that this stuff is actually being like covered by like news stations now, right? Like it used to be like taboo. I remember that uh you know, there's like that that weird like leprechaun sighting broadcast like maybe like ten years ago or something. Uh and it kind of became a meme because somebody drew it and it looked like a stick figure. <laughs> it, was just, it was like just a really bad like illustration of what these people thought they saw there's just a bunch of people like looking for a pot of gold and stuff like super excited about it so like i know the news like covered that because it was like funny right and it got attention and stuff but this uh these like coverages of like ufo like bodies that have been recovered and stuff and obviously like the crafts and stuff being being on like news networks like taken seriously so crazy to me man this is this is not 
I, I, you couldn't have expected this, you know, five years ago, even ten years ago. Well, whenever Atlantis went down, a lot of them, some of them went to Egypt and were survivors and to other places. But some of them went underground, and there's an entire cities all throughout. There's all kinds of tunnels and transportation systems that link them all together. Some of the trains and things down there can go 3,000 miles an hour to link the two the cities together. There's a, like a sun inside the earth that lights everything. So they have light, they have lakes, they have water, they have everything they need. And there's animals down there that do not exist on the surface of the earth. They have uh, live computers, if you want to say that. This is in my second volume of the convoluted universe. It talks about the underground cities. They have computers that we can't even approach that can create and do anything they want. And the people are so advanced, they have no desire to come to the surface. They have everything they need down there. <sighs> Man, the, the thought of that is and it, it's it's nuts right and like not nuts in a way to where like yeah it's crazy you're an insane person but like just nuts like to think about like that being true and i've heard of a lot of theories and I've, I've read and watched different things that talked about you know hollow earth or, or inner earth uh, i'm not sure if there's really a difference between the two um you can let me know if there is but of there being like a sun or like a light source right um inside the earth um and i know we found like caverns and and you know, caves that have like entire ecosystems. So it's very possible for things to thrive, you know, um, underground um, without, you know, sunlight and without being on the surface. So it makes you wonder. Yeah. Underground, completely underground. Without having, without having to come up. And there's turnoffs. You need security clearances to get through these turnoffs. They go into other bases, they go into other areas and, you know, uh, secret places, places you can't go. And what do they do there? Uh, they do a lot of things. I can tell you one thing they have two sets of elevators. And my security parents got me, got me down to the main, the main hallway, which is as big as Manhattan. I mean, it's as big as Manhattan. It's unbelievable. They have a, they have their own, they have acres of, of farm, farmland okay. with okay. lights. And farmland underground. Underground. They run the lights off farmland nuclear. Underground. They go through. They have livestock. I mean, everything. Yeah. They have everything. They have bench shafts. They have everything. Uh, but the two sets of ele elevators I was telling you about, uh, my clearance, I, I can only go down to the main hub. Then there was another set of elevators that brought you down further. And a bunch of friends of mine would tell me stories about that. Can you tell us anything about those stories? Yeah, I can tell you what they told me. What they told me is uh, there's actual aliens, uh, graves. Wait, wait, wait. Aliens. What was the word, graves? Graves. And, and, and yeah, also there's another yeah. kind. Uh, there's, a, there's, like different, there's different species that they, they talk about. Um, there's grays, there's, uh, they left aliens, all of different kinds. A gray is a type of alien. Right. It's not really a, it's, it's not really an alien, it's, it's a drone. It's not really a, it's like a, um, an organic drone. It's, it's, it's exactly what it is. What does that mean, an organic drone? It's not, it's not a living thing. It's, um, it's in living tissue, but it's a drone. They're not real. So, like, the Transformers? That's all I could think about when uh, <laughs> talking about like organic robots. I know it's not the case. It's probably probably nothing like that. That'd be cool though. That'd be pretty wild. But uh, man, dude, the more I watch this stuff, the more my mind is just like, right? Like, sure, I don't believe everything because you can't believe everything. But you have to be. You still have to be like open. You have to be open-minded enough to accept the possibility of things, right? And that's what I try to do. So I will. I'll take everything with a grain of salt, but at the same time, I'll also try to be, you know, rational about it, about it, and uh, you know, as logical as I can about about things that are out of the the realm of, of possibility based on our current understanding of physics and, and how the world and the universe works. Right? I, like so many others, just want the truth. So let's get right into the dead internet theory. Most of the internet is fake. The simple explanation for the dead internet theory is that the vast majority of the internet is actually generated by artificial intelligence in conjunction with paid media influencers in order to manufacture consumers for an increasingly wider range of newly normalized products, as well as to dramatically sway public opinion and control the collective attitude or outlook of people or culture. For all of the younger people out there who didn't experience the internet as it used to be, the internet of today is vastly different. Before the advent of the internet connected cell phone or the mass adoption of the home computer, before social media even existed, the internet was a place where people came to express passion, hobbies, feelings, and thoughts. It wasn't filtered or selectively shown to you based on what an algorithm thinks you want to hear. It also wasn't an echo chamber to keep you locked into a website or an app for hours and hours every single day. The internet was a collection of human thought, both right and wrong. 
and what you found and enjoyed was up to you. It wasn't monetized. The point of it wasn't to get as many clicks as possible or to keep you engaged for as long as possible. It just was. The internet was whatever you made it. The internet seems gigantic, but it's more like a hot air balloon because there's nothing inside. The same repeated threads and pictures and similar replies reposted over and over again across the years to the point that it's unremarkable anymore. All of your friends enjoying the same funny video as you, the same talking point shared repeatedly over and over online, or how every day something new is trending, so you better jump in and give your take on it. Every day, it's something, so the conversation can never linger too long. There's always the next new or shocking or unusual thing everyone is talking about. Don't step back, don't stop to think, keep engaged, keep scrolling, keep buying, keep wasting your time. Keep pointlessly arguing with bots online made to offend you to spark unending engagement. It's terrifying. How much of the internet is actually real? People, events, news, so many things can be completely fictional. And I mean, honestly, how would we know? April 15th, 12 years ago off the sunset coast of Perth, Australia. A computer network analyst was arrested for stealing one of the most important pieces of insight and information we have today regarding all of this stuff. Upon his arrest and eight hours of interrogation, he refused to disclose where he had gotten this information from. What information did he steal? Nothing. I just made this entire scenario up. Do you see how easy it could be for an AI or a computer program to write up a plausible article like this and disseminate it? Make three or four websites push different variant versions of the BS story. Share it to Facebook, Twitter, push it out on Google and let the unknowing populace read it, believe it, and share it further until a fake story becomes a real story. How long do you think it would take for someone to realize it wasn't real? Things like this have honestly happened many times and by the time the truth comes out, the internet has a point almost no one cares anymore and the facts get moved off of search engines and pushed into unfindable parts of the internet. The internet of old is dead. Man, that's true. Uh, I was talking to some friends yesterday about how the internet used to be so much different. Um, it was it was like the Wild West, honestly. I mean, there's good and bad to that, obviously. Um, like You could literally Google anything. Um, there's a lot of, you know, bad shit that's very easy to find that, you know, interested kids uh, and teenagers like myself and my friends and literally that whole generation would just like always see you couldn't avoid it, right? Um, because the internet was new and that stuff was available. So obviously there's good and bad to like the filters and stuff that the internet has now. Uh, but in the same sense, you know, the ability to stop information from being sent is also detrimental to actually gaining insight into important topics and stuff if you want to see part two of this let me know um in the comments or in the discord and we'll continue along this uh dead internet enlightenment <laughs> journey together right so and also let me know what you think of this let me let me know if you think this is plausible or if you think it's just a bunch of horse shit this is one of the creepiest videos from the dark web this video has been posted on the dark web under the title the exclusive truth of the dark web the name itself says a lot what are we to understand with this video? And what are these strange things? The problem with dark web videos is that they are posted anonymously, so it's impossible to know more. But the end will reveal a terrible thing. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm a little confused about the orca whale at the end there, what relevance that had to the rest of the video, but man, those little things were weird. <laughs> those things are fucking weird. Uh, I don't know what that was, man. I don't know what that was. I feel like, I feel like these dark web videos, I don't know what actually comes from the dark web. And then if it does come from the dark web, like they said, they're all anonymous, so it's hard to, you know, track down anyone or anything for any more information. So who knows, man? This video was published on the dark web with the title, The Dark Web is the One and Only Truth. The name itself is chilling, promising to reveal hidden things. What you're about to see could change what you know. This video takes you to a strange corner of the internet. As the video continues, you have to choose. Follow the revelations of this mysterious video, or turn back the clock to stay in your reality. But beware, exploring the dark web can be risky. Sometimes the truth is disturbing and can shake up what you believe. 
proceed with caution, because once you've seen what's in this video, there's no turning back. You may discover a truth that's hard to ignore, hidden in the shadows of the dark web. dark web reveals the truth, a video has been posted anonymously on the dark web showing the Bermuda Triangle, a geographical area in the Atlantic Ocean, widely believed to be the cause of a large number of ship disappearances. And the rest will surprise you. A few years ago, a disturbing video surfaced anonymously on the dark web, revealing a scene of a nature as mysterious as it was terrifying. The disturbing content featured a creature that defied rational explanation, a true demon. And look at those eyes. You get the impression that if you look at him, you're going straight to hell. In short, if you come across one, run and don't stop. It's really scary. I'm old Greg. <laughs> Sorry, dude. The, that last bit there, man. If you if you don't already know, uh, <laughs> look up old Greg on YouTube. The first bit, though, man, the Bermuda Triangle. Man, I was obsessed with the Bermuda Triangle when I was younger, dude. Uh, as a kid, man, I wanted to be an astronaut or an archaeologist. Uh, didn't work out. <laughs> but uh, uh, I was I was so into the Bermuda Triangle and our solar system, like from like age 10 up right so that's pretty crazy if there's bricks <laughs> if there's a brick road at the the bottom of the ocean so did you guys know that our typical search engines are only four percent of what we see on the web which is like google bing firefox i'm going to be talking about some of the most popular websites on the dark web so get ready because this is going to be intense so here's a photo example just to give you guys an idea of what this looks like at the top is the area that we do our research for school on or soccer x's i don't know and then 500 times larger than the surface web is the deep web. The deep web is filled with information that we cannot access, such as medical documents, iCloud, personal information. Like I obviously can't Google what your family history or intake forms say. So that's where this is stored. And then the dark web holds the last 6%. This part of the internet was created by the U.S. Navy in the 1990s, and it was made so spies could share info without being tracked. Well, then the government decided to release it to the public. And you need the specific software to go to it called Tor, which stands for the Onion Router. It hides your identity and gives you access to non-surface web pages. And on this section of the internet, you can do things like buy people's credit card information, get counterfeit money, participate in drug trafficking, hire hackers and hitmen, and way worse. And dude, the, the craziest thing is, like, the fact that it was created by the government, I, I guess the government it's like a blanket statement right it was created by by the government right which means still run by them which means they no doubt have things in place to see what's going on in order to track people uh and they no doubt profit off of it somehow right like i mean it has to be that's how like like all these social media networks work that's how all these you know browsers work that's how literally every site on the internet for the most part gains some sort of revenue from something right so for that to still be around and for them to be okay with people using it, um, with the public using it and them just like giving it to the public, right? Releasing it to the public. I mean, there's gotta be a way that they are letting things slide in order to profit from it, right? And only like taking out like the big, the big deals, right? On it. I don't know. I don't know anything about the dark web. I don't fuck with it. So, uh, I don't know. Let me know what you think. What's a conspiracy theory that you a thousand percent believe in? Okay, so this isn't a fully developed conspiracy yet because I kind of just thought of this today and it kind of was freaking me out a bit. But if you can connect it for me, that'll be great. Please stitch it. So you know how like in dreams, you're told to look at your hands if you are if you think you're dreaming because your dream brain can't formulate hands correctly and like either they'll be really long or weird or warpy or something. Well, today I was playing around with Wonder, an AI art, you know, thing that they're kind of generating art with computers now and I was playing around with it. And I told it to generate images of a black woman Jesus, but it just could not get the hands right. I'll show you the images below. They're beautiful, but I'll show you. So a lot of these hands are like almost, but like you can just know that, oh, well, definitely those are not human hands. But a lot of them like that is also not a human hand. I don't know what's on the right. I think it's a hand that kind of looks similar, but it's not.
So yeah, the thought is almost there, but I just don't know how to connect. What is it about dream hands and AI hands that don't go? Yeah, I don't really understand the, the AI having trouble with hands either. As far as the looking at your hands uh, when dreaming, to, to see if you're dreaming, that's 100% true. I was lucid dreaming a lot for a while there. I was microdosing um, like three months straight, and I was having a lot of lucid dreams during that time. So I was watching and reading a lot of things on how to to see if I'm dreaming because I, I had some some very, very vivid ones where I just wasn't sure. Uh, so now when I wake up to like use the restroom or get a glass of water or something in the, in the middle of the night, like I still, I count my fingers uh, when I wake up. It's just kind of become a habit because uh, it snaps you out of it. Uh, anyway, yeah, so <laughs> let me know your thoughts on the AI aspect of this and also lucid dreaming. Like what's the, I guess what's the, the craziest or I guess funnest thing you've done during a lucid dream? According to researchers, the Galactic Federation is comprised of countless species and civilizations. The ones most familiar to humanity are the Andromedans, Arcturians, Syrians, Pleiadians, and Felines. While other councils, alliances, and associations exist to work together on various projects and agendas, which may also include Galactic Federation members, the core members of the peaceful inner circle include these five. The Galactic Federation includes tens of thousands of different categories. In my work, the Arcturians would be one category as being the midway intelligence between the planetary systems of the third dimension and those of the higher dimensions. Another would be the Andromedans. It would be those who create amazing spacecraft that would require them to do the building in outer space because they're dealing with molecular relationships on multiple levels going through electromagnetic spectrums. Another, of course, would be the Pleiadians that come from what we would call in the indigenous tradition, the Seven Sisters or the Planetary Association of emphasizing the artistic and the holistic realm of creation. Man, who are these researchers and where are they getting this information? I'd really want to know. If you have any information on the Galactic Federation, like where this information comes from, uh, I mean, if it's that secretive, right? And if it's that, like, not talked about, you know, like, where does this stuff come from? I need to know, because I love this whole story, theory, whatever you want to call it. Like, the Galactic Federation is super interesting to me, and I wish that it was real. I, I hope that it's real, and, and I hope that someday soon it's, like, revealed and accepted so we can all live, like, you know, harmoniously together in a, a multi-planet, you know, species, and, and I know, it would just be really cool. Well, that's the first time I've ever seen that happen. Uh, I mean, it's supposed to be exhaust, right? Like water molecules, like vapor. I think that's what they say those trails are coming off of jets. But man, I've, I've seen a lot of stuff about these, um, you know, planes just basically trying to like repair the atmosphere, um, you know, trying to help block out the sun, trying to, you know, put things in the air to, you know, harmful for us or beneficial for us or I don't know, man. There, there's so many different theories when it comes to like chemtrails and stuff. Honestly, I have no clue, but that's that's weird just seeing it cut off like that. Like that was definitely intentional, right? Perhaps thinking that Damien had come home from work early, she waits for him to appear. But seconds pass, and no one is seen. Damien isn't there. Understandably, Crystal was shaken up, but it seems that this incident wasn't as scary to Crystal as the most recent occurrence. It's not known what exactly happened, but it's evident that whatever had just occurred has left the couple no choice but to leave their house. In a recent video, Damien explains the situation. Yeah, we 
we're just so we're um just outside because it's getting weird in there and we don't feel safe being in there anymore so we're just gonna go to a just airbnb for the night and uh just for the night and then we're gonna figure out The activity has become so intense that they can no longer live happily inside their house. Sadly, they have no choice but to leave behind their dream home in the hopes that things would settle down. Feeling hopeless, they book an Airbnb and spend the night there. However, the following night, they decide to return home and try something that would- They definitely had the right idea, leaving. I'll tell you what though, if it was a burglar, I would beat the brakes off of somebody coming in my place. But a ghost? I ain't even trying to fight you, I'm like, here. Take my Bible, take my holy water, take it all. Take whatever you want, my wallet, take my ghost peppers, uh, whatever it is you guys eat, I'm out. I don't know if I can say this on YouTube, man, but roundhouse the shit out of a little possessed person. I will, I'm telling you, man. Money you earn, I'm afraid that's very selfish. <laughs> we shall want to tax that away. You want to own shares in your firm? We can't have that. The state has to own your firm. You want to choose where to send your children to school? That's very divisive. You'll send your child where we tell you. Socialists don't like ordinary people choosing, or they might not choose socialism. The political space uh, nowadays, man, in America, I can't speak for anywhere else, but I know living here, uh, it seems very much like we're being forced to do things that we don't necessarily always agree with, right? We're, we're, we're kind of being pressured to, to accept things that we might not otherwise accept, you know, on our own terms, and our own accord. Uh, and really, I think a lot of people are just like being bullied into, um, you know, saying they agree with things that they don't and uh, living lifestyles that they don't necessarily agree with or not being able to live lifestyles that they agree with. And uh, it's a very polarizing space, right? I guess I'm pretty simple in the fact that I'm, I'm a firm believer in just letting people do what they want and to be happy so long as it's not at the expense of other people. It, it sounds simpler than it is, I guess, but I mean, that, that's how I feel. Listen to this because this is very fucking wild. About 10 days after 9-11, I went through the Pentagon and one of the generals called me and he said, Sir, you gotta come in, you gotta come in and talk to me a second. He says, we've made the decision we're going to war with Iraq. I said, we're going to war with Iraq? Why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess it's like, we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we got a good military and we can take down governments. So I came back to see him a few weeks later and by that time we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense Office today. And he said, this is a memo that describes how we're gonna take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. It's like insane that this was just said. How do they not talk about that every day? I mean, it's, it's not surprising. Uh, <laughs> not for me anyway. To get through tough times When shuttles blow up, it's not always an accident What do you mean, not an accident? Who is this guy singing? And who am I, a conspiracy fly? Did you know NASA means deceive in Hebrew? I did not. The Denver airport was built by the Illuminati. Hey, to show that fly out of here. I will as soon as I find out if he has a band from the Apple Store podcast I can listen to. I do. 
It's fly on the wall dot buzz slash truth. First reconfigure your DNS server, then download a VPN and get the Tor browser. It's too much work. <laughs> oh man, how about how about not seen that? Holy <laughs> Oh my god, dude. Okay, so check this out. Before humans, according to the Kabbalah, Adam Cadman, a heavenly human or androgynous cosmic being, if you don't know what androgynous means, it means having male and female characteristics, was created first as a spiritual reflection of the divine creator. So like Adam and Eve was created as, phys as a physical reflection of Adam Cadman. So we know the zodiac chart or the wheel is Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, which is the beginning stage from spring to summer. So you start from the head, which is Aries, the ram, the cerebram, which is the cerebrum of the brain, the top part of the brain, the bigger part of the brain, and the cerebellum, which is the cerebellum, the lower part of the brain. So when you stand this man up, you have Aries at the top, and then you have Pisces at the feet. You are Adam Cadman. You are the universe. You are the universe. You are the zodiacal wheel. So Aries, your cerebrum, Taurus, your cerebellum, Gemini twins, both your arms, you have your chest, Cancer, or your uh, breasts, your heart is Leo, you ever hear the term heart of a lion, Virgo stomach, Libra kidneys, Scorpio reproductive organs, Sagittarius is the hips, Sagittarius is the man on the horse, and, and hippo means horse because hippopotamus literally means water horse, the knee Capricorn, Aquarius Achilles heel, Pisces feet. As above, so below. This is also how the sun goes through the signs. We are representations of everything. So the sun goes from the beginning of the year, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. But the reality, it's supposed to start Aries. This should be January. This should be the beginning because we're starting in winter. So it should start in March and then end in Pisces. So the ages go from Pisces to Aquarius, and right now we're entering the age of Aquarius. We were in Pisces. So we will be in the age of Capricorn in 2,000 years from now. So 4,000 years ago, we had Adam and Eve, and then we had Abraham and Moses, then we had Jesus, and then now here we are. But what happened before that? So like 10,000 BC, we had the pyramids, and they were made in Egypt, and that's why we have the lion. We have the lion sphinx because it was made in the age of Leo, which was 10,000 BC. And to be honest, this is the type of stuff that they should have been teaching us in school, but they didn't, and they don't. I don't know. <laughs> How do that's see? That's a lot. Like somebody who doesn't know anything about it, like coming into it, like it's almost intimidating, right? It's almost like I look at that and I'm like, "That's fucking." How the hell did you even come up with that? Like, like part of me is like, "That's fucking stupid." That's bullshit. And the other side of me is like, "That's fucking intense." This is great. Like I want to learn more, you know. But it's like that weird, um, like a uh, disconnect there, like misunderstanding. It's like uh, somebody doesn't listen to metal music; they think it all sounds the same, right? Like that's all gibberish to me. Uh, is as interesting as it is. So yeah, if you have any more information about that uh, to help me get a better understanding, uh, I'm not gonna lie, I don't really feel like researching it. Uh, so if you could just summarize it <laughs> for me in a comment or join the Discord and drop some videos for me to watch, uh, that would be helpful. <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's very interesting. <laughs> on May 17th, 2022, Congress held the first public hearing on UFOs for the first time in over 50 years. More than 50 years ago, the U.S. government ended Project Blue Book, an effort to catalog objects in the air that could not otherwise be explained. The purpose was clear, to shed the stigma that UFO sightings have within the government. A stigma that started when Project Blue Book stated that all UFO sightings have a logical explanation, such as swamp gas, ball lightning, and weather balloons. And this conclusion didn't set well with a lot of people. The stigma associated with UAPs has gotten in the way of good intelligence analysis. Pilots avoided reporting or were laughed at when they did. Such as Commander Fravor, who personally chased a tic tac shaped UFO that jammed his radar before zipping over 60 miles away in an instant. It rapidly accelerated in front of us and disappeared. The controller came up and said, sir, you're not going to believe this, but that thing is at your cat point roughly 60 miles away in less than a minute. You can calculate the speed. And Ryan Graves, an F-18 pilot whose squadron began detecting UFOs that they described as a dark gray cube 
cube inside of a clear sphere that hovered in place. I'm sorry, dark gray or black cubes? Yes, inside of a clear sphere. That's why in 2022, Congress started a new task force to start looking more seriously into the UFO topic. The two men in charge of this new UAP task force, Scott Bray and Ronald Moultrie. Secretary Moultrie, Mr. Bray, thank you for coming today. If you're like one of the thousands of people who tuned into this hearing yourself, you probably couldn't help but feel this overwhelming sense that these two guys seem to know almost nothing about the vast history that UFOs have in this country, yet they're the ones supposedly in charge of UAP intelligence. And rather than discussing any of the well-known and very well-documented cases going all the way back to the 1940s, the video they revealed to Congress was a shaky cell phone video that showed a quick blur that even they had a hard time pointing out on the video. Uh, the laptop we're working with uh, is yeah. not as easy for us stopping that video in the right well, spot. The hearing then reached its climax when a congressman from Wisconsin asked these two men if they knew anything about the 1967 UFO incident at Malmstrom Air Force Base. There have been UAP observed flying over sensitive military facilities. One such incident allegedly occurred at Malmstrom Air Force Base. I'm simply asking you whether you're aware of it and whether you have any comment on the accuracy of that report. To which they responded by saying, That data is not uh, within the holdings of the UAP task force. Okay, but are you aware of the, the report? I have heard stories. I have not seen the official data on that. Shocked by what he was hearing, Gallagher then scolded these two guys for how little they seemed to know about such a high-profile incident. Well, I would say, I mean, it's a pretty high-profile incident. I don't claim to be an expert on this, but that's out there in the ether. You're the guys investigating it. I mean, who else is doing it? If something was officially brought to our attention, we look at it. Uh, I'm bringing it to your attention. Sure, so. It's pretty official. And the interaction ended when Moultrie then blamed their lack of knowledge on the case on their lack of resources. There are probably a lot of leads that we would have to follow up on. I don't think we have resources to do that right now. So why was Gallagher so passionate about the Malmstrom Air Force Base incident to begin with? Turns out it's because that incident in particular highlights a clear pattern that started to emerge regarding UFOs. That ever since the end of World War II, which ended with the invention of the nuclear bomb, there's been a clear uptick in flying saucer sightings near nuclear installations. After the detonation of the atomic bombs in Japan, that's when the UFO sightings ramped up. Man, I gotta feel like shit like that where they just like pick random people that like don't know anything about it and like put them in in these positions of of power like controlling this whole, you know, task force. Uh, they're just fucking with us, dude. You know, they're, they're doing this just to shut us up. They're just like showing us like the shittiest, shakiest stuff that's like hard to prove putting these guys like they're they're probably fucking janitors they probably just pulled out they're like hey it's like a bullshit promotion right we need you to, to take the lead on this you know and and just like giving us shitty evidence with these assholes that don't know shit about it and don't care to really solve the issue just taking the blunt of the trauma from the the backlash of the people that want real answers sorry i'm very passionate today uh <laughs> but let me know if you agree first of all understand that if you're a u.s citizen you do not own anything what? if you 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 paid your house off you don't own it uh you have an equitable interest in the property but you don't own it only way you can own anything in america to actually own it is with something called a lodio title a l l o d i a l a lodio i think that's the way it's spelled a-L-L-O-D-I-A-L, a lodial title. A lodial title means God cannot touch it. No one. Because it's absolute owned by you. But if you don't buy your car, your jet plane, your boat, your house, whatever it is, and have a lodial, a lodial title, then you don't own it. And, and the, the authorities can come in and take your home anytime they want. <clears throat> it's interesting. Banks cannot touch anything that has a, a lodial title, cannot touch it. Government cannot touch it. No one can touch anything that is bought under a lodial title. Go look it up in a dictionary. Or look it up in a law dictionary. Huh. A lodial title. Very interesting. You, The Queen of England, everything she owns is in a lodial title. It means God can't touch it. Hmm. Yeah. So, and Americans can buy uh, stuff in a lodial title. You just... I wonder if that's like an unspoken option, right? If you like go to like buy a car, or you go to buy a house or something, if that's like kind of like a fine print um, like option they just don't tell you about. Taste by a mutant wolf?
Is it a dire wolf or a normal wolf? Damn, man, I know that wolves like get pretty big, right? Uh, I don't, I'm not sure how big black wolves get. I don't even think I've ever seen a black wolf before, honestly. Um, but if that was a full-size husky, that was a big ass wolf, man. I don't know if they're supposed to get that big. Dude, I don't know what it is about, <laughs> this is gonna sound so stupid. I don't know what it is about like naked pale people, <laughs> like just peering through windows, it creeps me out so fucking much, but nope. <laughs> I don't know, that stuff, that might creep me out more than like, like just moving shadows and, and shit, dude. Something is watching me. If you've had the feeling, you know what I'm talking about. I'm playing only up in my office. Something keeps passing by this window. I'm gonna, I just propped up the phone here and I'm gonna play. If you're walking by my office, I want you to knock it off. Holy. Is that you making all that noise back there? This thing's always closing doors. You need to get out. Dan, will you knock it off, please? You oh, gotta get out. Fuck you. You're you're gonna lock yourself in the laundry room again? You're not leaving? You're not gonna take Oh my god. <laughs> I wanna thank you for submitting that video to the Discord. Uh, and when I say this I mean it in the nicest, the kindest, most loving way possible. Fuck you, dude. <laughs> Uh, how does someone remain so calm in that situation? And then, like, continues to live there. <laughs> I just don't understand. There's a slime mold called Physarium polycephalum. And this slime mold is very, very good at navigating through mazes and challenges. Japanese uh, are so clever at this. They designed uh, a nutrient, um, uh, basically a nutrient-like maze, um, replicating um, Tokyo in the Japanese subway system. And with all the major cities, the nodes around Tokyo, each, each of those nodes had a piece of oat on them. It was a source of nutrition. And then they let the slime mold then grow. And first it grew out randomly, exploratorily. And then after about 28 hours, it reorganized itself in the most efficient way possible and reorganize the Japanese subway system in a more efficient manner than it's designed today. Thus, they, they said, not me, not Paul Stamets, this is a demonstration of cellular intelligence. Whoa. So this is the tip of the proverbial mycelial iceberg, you know? Bro, I'm gonna have to get some of that slime to teach me how to navigate my relationship. Hey, babe, can you come here for a second? I wanna put the slime on you. Don't worry about it. You're gonna love it. 
A, the real Pharaoh's curse is that we haven't built a pyramid bigger than Giza yet. I mean, just look at it. This thing is massive, and it's over 4,000 years old. Oh, but we do have a pyramid bigger than that, and nobody's talking about it. The Great Pyramid of Giza is peanuts against the Buried Pyramid of the Sun in Bosnia, and you will not believe what they found there. In 2005, archaeologist Dr. Samir Osmanijic realized, hey, this hill in the small Bosnian city of Visoko is oddly shaped like a pyramid. And shaped like a pyramid was an understatement. This hill has has virtually every characteristic of a real pyramid and we continue to ignore it. To start, it has four triangular sides. That's it, pyramid confirmed, we're done. Joking, but it's got even great slopes and corners that connect perfectly under the foliage. Along with an apex at the very top, the exact shape of a pyramid, but oh, it don't end there, Johnny boy. It's also perfectly aligned to the cardinal directions, north, east, south, and west, much like Giza. In fact, this one is even more aligned to true north than Giza, being only one three hundredths of a degree off from perfect north, whereas Giza Giza is two sixtieths of a degree off. They even took EMF, electromagnetic frequency readers, to the top and saw readings of 60 times more of what is normally expected on Earth. Another phenomenon that tends to occur at the pyramids, and the reason why is so mind-baffling that we'll have to save that for a future video. This hill was aptly named the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, the first pyramid of its kind in Europe, taller than the Great Pyramid of Giza, and even bigger than the biggest pyramid of the world, Cholula, in Mexico, with four other smaller hills around it that are also suspected to be pyramids or some other structures, as is usually the case at these ancient sites. Sure, it might just look like a hill covered in trees, but have a look at what the Pyramid of the Sun in Teotihuacan, Mexico looked like before it was excavated and after. Same with Machu Picchu and after and Chichen Itza and after. Any ancient site that isn't in a desert is typically covered with overgrowth, and the Bosnian Pyramid is looking a lot like that before stage. And just have a look at these drone shots and tell me these formations look natural to you. So Dr. Osmanigic began the excavations, and now get this, radiocarbon analysis taken from the rocks hidden beneath the vegetation revealed that this pyramid would be over 35,000 years old, the oldest pyramid in the world by a long shot, over 30,000 years older than Giza, during a time in which traditional history claims only tribes and cavemen incapable of erecting such monuments roamed the earth far before any civilizations began to form or so we think for reference here's a timeline of all major ancient civilizations and structures built around the world and here is where the bosnian pyramid would stand in that timeline excavations also revealed huge blocks of seven tons each stacked with geopolymer binding which is an ancient type of cement and perfect placement along with perfectly landscaped terraces and other obvious architectural design but oh no these are all natural note that this was all uncovered up to a meter underground, as would be expected of a pyramid over 35,000 years old. And of course, the archaeological gatekeepers of the world insisted this is just coincidental. With some even going as far as saying Dr. Osmanigic purposely placed these carved stones here to deceive the public. And famed Egyptologist Zahi Hawass, who oversees most of the Egyptian pyramid investigations, even petitioning the Bosnian government to stop these excavations. Within hours of this international discovery, the story is swept under the rug and labeled a hoax. Well, over 50 archaeologists around the world remained optimistic and actually joined Osmanagic's work in Bosnia, with virtually every single one of them who actually saw it in person confirming that nature could not have formed these hills. Further studies revealing an entire underground tunnel system in the area, the longest subterranean complex of any pyramid in the world. Inside these tunnels, large stone blocks were found that clearly seemed to be artificially created and placed. Other artifacts like this giant round stone that no one can explain and a whole bunch of other smaller ancient trinkets, statues, and even what appears to be a map carved into stone were all found around the Bosnian Valley of Pyramids, all dismissed as irrelevant or flat-out ignored by mainstream archaeology. Even the peak of the Sun Pyramid forms a perfect triangle with the peaks of the nearby hills, dubbed the Pyramids of the Moon and the Dragon. Another crazy coincidence, right? After much pushback, the government actually did grant Osmanagic the right to continue excavations. But with no official funding, the entire project depends on donations and volunteer work. These excavations are still going on, but after tourism to Bosnia slowed down in the last couple of years, progress on these pyramids have as well. As with with anything, you could probably rationalize a completely valid reason for each of these discoveries, and maybe it really is somehow just a hill, so you think we're tweaking on this one, or are we onto something? Who's ready to get digging? Man, that Egyptian archaeologist is such a fucking nub, dude. Nothing pisses me off more. Like, when ISIS destroyed, like, those old temples, and just erased history, just bulldozed that, like, old temple, that fucking, that shit drives me up the goddamn wall especially someone like an archaeologist trying to like stop 
research and try to stop discovery. I wanted to be an archaeologist when I was a kid. I wanted to fucking dig up dinosaur bones. I wanted to, you know, Indiana Jones this shit. So I'm pretty passionate when when somebody who is supposed to be making new discoveries and helping us learn and discover things, and instead they're they're being paid off to uh, keep things quiet or just like working to keep things from progressing in order to like save face and remain like the dominant um, explorer in that dude. It just I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting worked up, but this shit, it just annoys the hell out of me. So you've definitely seen this guy talking about acid versus alkaline diets, and you've probably had a friend tell you meat is a si This guy is either a paid person to promote meat, like the Liver King, because the Liver King's an actor, or he's just an idiot, because if he did his due diligence and he knew who Dr. Sebi was, he would see the Supreme Court documents where he took hundreds of individuals where he alleviated them from the diseases that they were experiencing in their lives through an alkaline way of living. Listen, it's real simple. When you go to school, you are taught in chemistry that there are two sides, alkalinity and acidity. Alkalinity promotes cellular reconstruction and acidity promotes cellular deconstruction. This is why Western medicine uses petroleum-based medicines. They don't cure nothing, they just treat symptoms. But on the alkaline side, it fixes your organs and your body gets better because your body is interdependent. And your body's carbon, and the closest thing to carbon is raw fructose from raw organic fruit. Anything heightened goes through the pancreas and the insulin. I see a lot of people nowadays, especially here in Florida, where people are, are becoming, you know, a little more health conscious when it comes to like diets and, you know, natural remedies and stuff, at least where I'm at in Florida. A lot of people are drinking alkaline water. A lot of people are getting like filters, you know, installed in their homes. It seems to be working for them, right? So it's probably something I should look a little more into, I guess. Did you know that in the ancient biblical text of the Book of Enoch, there's vivid descriptions of multiracial aliens called Anunnaki who went against God and slept with the daughters of men and they bore great giant offspring? Enoch, who was the great-grandfather of biblical Noah, also known as Zisudra, recounts Noah being albino with blue eyes and a son of Enki, the Sumerian water god. Interestingly, the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD chose to exclude this book from the Bible due to its detailed accounts of encounters with alien beings known as the Anunnaki, who interacted with our ancient ancestors. Today, we're going to reveal the complete historical records from the Book of Enoch and the Lost Book of Enki, shedding light on these events from ancient times. Enoch, a righteous and just man favored by the Lord God Enki, described a time before the first great flood. He witnessed extraordinary events, such as being taken up into the sky in a burning disc or chariot, where he saw the earth as a massive sphere, which in modern terms, this could be interpreted as an experience of being on a spaceship, viewing the planet Earth from beyond its atmosphere. During Enoch's time, humanity was peaceful, offering rituals and sacrifices to both their god and gods. Ritually, these gods accepted the offerings and stored them for later use, thus no longer needing to farm or grow their own food on this planet, the humans could do it for them. Enki, a compassionate, wise but lustrous water god, was left in charge of Earth after his brother Enlil was away off planet. He held great affection for human men and also the daughters they produced. This led to him having relations with Lame's wife, Betanos. Lamech, the grandson of Enoch was driven and overjoyed to hear the birth of a son from Betanos. Little did he know the great shock that awaited him. The following verse from Book of Enoch 105 reads, After a time, my son Mathusala took a wife for his son Lamech. She became pregnant by him and brought forth a child, the flesh of which was as white as snow and red as a rose, the hair of whose head was white like wool and long and whose eyes were beautiful. When he opened them, he illuminated all the house, like the sun. The whole house abounded with light. And when he was taken from the hand of the midwife, opening also his mouth, he spoke to the Lord of Righteousness. Then Lamech his father was afraid of him, and flying away came to his own father Mathusala, and said, I have begotten a son, unlike to other children. He is not human, but resembling the offspring of the angels of heaven, is of a different nature from ours, being altogether unlike to us. Enoch's depiction in this passage reveals that Noah, also known as Zisudra, possessed the distinctive trait of being an albino. 
he bore striking physical resemblances to some of messengers and deities, commonly referred to as the Anunnaki. This uniqueness set him apart from other humans, as the descendants of Adam had a dark skin complexion during this time. Wait, so does that mean that the Anunnaki are the Nordics? Uh, man, there's just so much, but that's wild. And didn't Methuselah like live to be like 600 years old or something? But yeah, as far as the the angels being the Anunnaki and them being like blonde hair, blue eyed, and stuff, that would they be? Is that the same? Are they the Nordics, or is that just another like albino race? Help me understand this, please. We're living in a multi-dimensional universe, and there's at least 11 dimensions. Otherwise, the universe would collapse. Each dimension is a 90 degree angle right above the next one, compactified. So they're sitting right on top of us. So within less than a plot unit of space above you, there is another dimension that actually exists with a whole other universe happening simultaneously while we're sitting right here. From higher dimensions, they experience time differently. Time really doesn't exist. The past, present, and the future happen all at once. So somebody from the fifth dimension would look at us and they'd be able to see us in all the different rooms. The different rooms represent different time frames mm -hmm. of the existence within this structure. So they can see the past, present, and future at the same time. Weird stuff starts happening the higher the dimensions you go. Atoms are 99.999% empty space. Nothing is really here. Everything is only a light wave slowed down to a particular frequency. And so if you can match frequencies, you can merge with things. You can walk through walls, all that kind of stuff. The things that are seen paranormal could be advanced beings have tapped into some type of uh, understanding of how to match different frequencies in our dimension and appear at paranormal but in true reality they could just be taking a peek in isn't there something I, I don't know if it's called like molecular vibrating or whatnot but basically it's how you would travel through solid objects right it's just be able to like vibrate so quickly that you can just vibrate through the i guess the the atoms of the solid object um, but I wonder if that would be kind of the same way to travel through, not just solids, right? But also travel through these different, I guess, dimensions, right? These different, uh, planes of existence. If you could do that, I don't know <laughs> what I want to know. Okay. Here's another conspiracy theory. The, you've seen all the, the grainy footage of nuclear test blasts sure. with the mushroom clouds. And there are always these grainy things and there's all these like little houses lined up and these little trees yes. lined up and it blows everything down. Yeah. Okay. So here's the question, right? So what happened? Okay. So this is great. Okay. You'll love this. So what happened to the camera? You son of a bitch. What how how is that camera? happening yet the camera is like totally stable and fine? Oh my God. And, and by the way, and the film is fine. The radiation that didn't uh, cause any damage to the film. Oh my God. And by the way, okay. We'll like, do this one more time here. Where's the, let's see the car. Where's the car, the car behind the house. It just showed up. Oh, okay. Just showed so wait a minute. First it of all, wasn't there. First of all where the car no comes car. from. Yeah. No car. The second, is, does it really look like car. a car? Does that look like a real car? That's insane. And look at the um yeah, and look at the when the house blows. Look at the uh, the the wood. Does that look like it's those are full size like you know giant lumber beams? As they go flying. Uh, is that a house or is that like you know a, is that a twelve you know, twelve inch uh, you know scale model? What? Right. That does look fake. Yeah. And also the camera didn't move at all yet. You know what it looks like? It looks like the smoke is too big. Watch, watch when it hits. Like it's it, the volume, like the size of it. It looks small. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it looks like something we're looking at something that's like a few inches yeah. tall. If you watch like making of Star Wars, any of the you know any movies before CGI, whenever they do anything like that, it's mm -hmm. always with these tiny models. Yeah, this looks fake as shit. Right, another one. It's like okay, what the camera? The camera's fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, <what? laughs> that's hilarious. <laughs> I don't know uh, how the camera survived or the film. I'm pretty sure that like those nuclear test sites, obviously they're not bombing like like real places. I'm pretty sure they make like decoy houses and, and things like that, right? They could have very well been miniatures. I don't know. But I'm pretty sure like test sites for explosion stuff, they want to see how it reacts with, you know, the um, structures and stuff. So they actually just make like like cheap versions of it, right? So that would explain it like breaking apart, I guess, a little differently. So the YouTube channel, The Corridor Crew, actually, they're a visual effects artist and they, they release some awesome stuff breaking down VFX. Like I, I've learned so much. Here are 16 CIA operations that you've probably never heard about. Number one, Operation Mockingbird. Starting around 1950 and growing on to today, the CIA has been known to utilize the media to spread conspiracies. They would put tons of journalists on payroll and make them manipulate information coming out on CIA operations in other countries and even just push certain agendas on the American population. Number two is going to be Extraordinary Rendition, which was started around 1995 and is a secret program from the CIA for interrogating and torturing. As of right now, we know of at least 136 individuals who are reportedly extraordinarily rendered or secretly detained by the CIA, and at least 54 governments reportedly participated in the CIA's secret detention and extraordinary rendition program. 
Let me know in the comments if you want a dedicated video on all of these different operations because within these renditions are some of the most horrific things you'll ever see. This is Ghul Rahman who was mistakenly captured by the CIA operatives back in 2001 who due to the bullshit oil war that Bush started and the invasion of Afghanistan, he fled from war to Pakistan. He earned a living for his family selling wood to other Shamshatu camp refugees, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but in October of 2002, while in Islamabad for a medical checkup, he was abducted in a joint US-Pakistani operation. After nearly two decades of investigation, the CIA has finally been held accountable back in 2017 and compensated the family for his death. And rather than going to court and admitting their own truths because the two individuals that tortured him, which by the way, these CIA officers stripped him naked, chained him to the concrete floor and left him there overnight without blankets. And this is what caused him to freeze to death. After failing repeatedly on trying to get this case thrown out for years, they finally decided to settle the case instead of going to court and exposing all of the truth. Number three is going to be enhanced interrogation that was started essentially and approved by President Bush after 2001 9-11. Of course, these techniques rolled over to what happened in Afghanistan with Ghul himself. Both of these operations led to the creation of black sites, which have slowly been being leaked and found due to declassified information because of CIA fuckups. And the scariest part is we have no idea how many of these black sites actually exist. But what we do know is because of the declassification of a lot of these documents, we do know that Abu, who is going to be known as the forever prisoner, even though the government was never able to bring any charges on him about saying he was a part of Al-Qaeda after 9-11 took place, meaning he has committed no crime, the CIA went beyond human right violations. Now I can't show you these pictures, but he drew many depictions of what the CIA did after they captured essentially an innocent man. And admittedly on tape in front of a hearing, the CIA admits destroying all of the tapes and admits to torturing him. This includes rape, it includes putting him in small confined spaces that known as walling, it includes waterboarding him over 80 different times, and used him directly as a test subject on how to enhancely torture individuals at these black sites. And despite all of the admitting to lies and documentation of the CIA being massively corrupted, as of 2021 he was still in prison. Number five is going to be Operation Ajax, which was a coup d'etat that was started by the CIA because they didn't want Iran to nationalize their oil industry. You see, Iran is vastly rich with oil as a natural resource, and nationalizing this would be a huge threat to the West and their control over the oil industry. Now, even though this was years before the petroleum dollar, what initially took place is in 1953, the CIA started this operation to pretty much allow the Western civilization the United States to come into control over all of the Iranian natural resources and oil. They wanted to overthrow the leader, so that way whoever they put in place would be a Western subject or someone that lives up to the United States. Now this essentially destabilized Iran and led up to 1974 over the next 20 years when there was the massive oil crisis, the US managed to consolidate dollar supremacy by establishing the petrodollar with Saudi Arabia. So had they not destabilized Iran and they were to nationalize oil industry, Iran very well could have been as rich as Saudi Arabia today. But this story is wild. Man, that is, I don't even know how to comment on that. That's so much information. I mean, if you do any digging, you can, you'll see that the, the CIA is just, you know, there's, there's so much crazy stuff going on there. I don't really want to comment on it myself, but, you know, like corruption, lack of accountability, like, like there, there's, there are things that will come up that will point in all these directions. So uh, without going into too much detail, I'll let you look further into it. I'll find some more information about it, but as far as me saying it, I think I'm just gonna, just gonna not do that. <laughs> I hate this man. Watch the clown.
in no reality that exists in the vastness of these never-ending multiverse realities will you find one where I am sleeping in a bed with that fucking weird-ass clown on a dresser staring at me while I sleep. There's no fucking way. Absolutely fucking not. Paranormal or not, I don't fuck with that shit. Mm -mm. Whatever that was, I'm not fucking doing it. There's no way. This is why you can't go snooping around. This man claimed to have found a giant, and then the CIA found him. Andrew Dawson filmed this on top of Jasper National Park in Alberta, Canada. He thought there was a giant there. It gained a lot of traction online, so he tried to get closer and find the creature. But in the process, he claimed that he was stopped and harassed by the CIA. He stops posting for over a month, then he posts this video. It was really weird. All of the viewers were like, this seems forced. A month and a half later, after no posting, he dies. There's so much evidence about giants existing throughout history. The Smithsonian even tried to cover this up. This is like a whole thing. The government doesn't want us to know the giants are real, but there's so much evidence pointing to that they might be real. It's like they've tried to rewrite history and take giants out of it, but then if you look at historical artifacts and documents, giants are mentioned. They're mentioned in the Bible. They're mentioned in all sorts of different cultures from different places in the world that aren't connected to each other. Everyone believed in giants. If you want me to make a whole video talking about it, let me know and follow my TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube for more. It really helps when you interact. How did the Egyptians build these pyramids? What if we had 30 to 40 foot giants on this planet? They built the pyramids, but to them they were just like small little rocks. Genesis makes a direct correlation between giants and mankind. But there are also hieroglyphics of giants just physically lifting these stones up. I don't know, I've had this conversation in another video. I don't think the earth is big enough to house like multiple people, hundreds of people, whatever, however many it were, thousands that are like the size of mountains, right? But I can get behind there being, you know, like 10 foot, 12 foot, maybe even 15 foot, you know, giants here at some point. Because that makes a little more sense to me. But as far as the like world governments covering up, the existence of giants? I don't really understand that. I don't, I don't know why that would be such a big deal. Dude, I don't know. Everything is so conflicting right now. The giants are in the Bible. They're trying to, you know, move us further away from, from God religion. Um, so they cover up the existence of the giants. But then the giants were the Nephilim or the Anunnaki. But now they're coming out and they're telling us about aliens. But not the giants, even though the aliens were the giants. Like, There's so much happening. But... Uh, as of right now, I don't understand why they would just like let little bits out that would kind of confirm these things without just like, oh yeah, no, that's that's all that. If you're a conspiracy theorist, yeah, this is this is the real conspiracy. The conspiracy is have as many social problems as possible to that people distra get distracted yeah. by, that people concentrate on, whether it's a, a pandemic, whether it's masks, vaccines, pride trans movement drag show, sponsor drag shows for kids if you want people to get mad and want people to get distracted right right sponsor Let them that. focus on that get, get yeah. people to think that it's a good idea to do that and and watch watch the outrage you know get people to think that the oceans are going to be boiling in five years you know right get get people to think that if we don't change it like that was one of the things that greta thurnberg said five years ago that we'll all be dead in okay, five well, years well it's five years later yeah. and we're not all dead so you definitely are wrong and you're yeah. 16 so yeah. why are they flying you out to ukraine <laughs> like yeah. what's going on yeah. so there's these so many of these fucking social distractions that are in our face all day long about everything and i feel like sometimes that's what i feel like about supreme court rulings we're going to take away roe v wade and everybody's like what the fuck what yeah what and that's another one yeah. and then that one becomes a thing that people identify as the most important problem that they have to solve and while, while all this is going on money's getting moved around decisions are getting made yeah and it, it's a brilliant cover for wild shit yeah because uh, all you have to do ever really is a, is follow the money on anything yeah and you see what's actually happening and everything else is a distraction to that uh yeah i mean that makes perfect sense right united we stand divided we fall their strength in numbers, like what better way to weaken a society than to turn them against each other, right? To where their focus, our focus is on smaller issues, p personal issues, which affect us as individuals more because our emotions are raging and we're told to really lean into our emotions rather than look at the world through a lens of logic and rationality, right? Like we're basically getting patted on the back for letting our emotions run our actions nowadays, which I think is 
not great. It's not a great idea in, in any in any area of life. Um, but that's what we're basically told to do, which is just like supercharging our reactions to these these smaller issues while people in the background are just making, you know, large moves, big moves while we're distracted. I think it's always been like that, you know? I mean, it's just all propaganda. Everything that we're told is just propaganda um, to, to get us to either sway one way into something or away from something or distract us from what's actually happening. Here's a newsworthy story for you. According to the LAPD, a man posing as a U.S. Marshal was taken into custody at an event attended by Democratic presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. The man seen here wearing an EMS shirt had two shoulder holsters, lots of ammo. He claimed to be a federal agent and to be employed for the event, but he wasn't recognized by the security staff. At the time of posting this video, the man's identity has not yet been made public. And a spokesperson for the LAPD stated that the FBI may end up taking over the investigation. Further details regarding any potential charges are unavailable at this time because he hasn't officially been booked. Mr. Kennedy took to social media, thanking the LAPD for their quick response. He also thanked the security company that he hired after his early request for a Secret Service detail was denied by the Secretary of Homeland Security, Alejandro Mayorkas. In his post, RFK Jr. also stated the following, I am the first presidential candidate in history to whom the White House has denied a request for protection. Although they've made exceptions in the past, presidential candidates are typically not provided security until 120 days before the election. So I haven't really followed any of this much. I don't, I don't know much about RFK Jr., but I do know that he's making waves. I don't know what to think about this. I've seen a couple things saying, you know, he's the plant, not RFK. I mean, maybe, maybe that too. When I'm talking about this, this guy who attempted this um, and posed as a uh, federal agent. I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on. All this is crazy. Interesting facts that you may not know. Crazy theories that make you skeptical about life. Everyone you've ever known knows and will know is you. That is the egg hypothesis. This theory comes from a short story of the same name in which there are two main groups, you and a god, in the story you die in a car accident and after your death. Face to face with God, God tells you that you will be reincarnated but not to the future, but you will be reincarnated into the past as a Chinese girl. In the 5th century, God also said that each time you die in each life, you will continue to be forwarded to different times and places in the timeline until a point in time where you will be live the lives of all the humans that have ever existed on Earth. And when you are done living all your lives, all your beings will merge and become one God, all in all hypothetical. This theory holds that the universe exists as an egg for you to live within, and lives will help you to grow and grow until one day, when you have completed all your lives, you will hatch from the egg and grow become god god damn i love that story man that's such a cool such a cool story such a cool theory uh it makes me think though like if a god created you to do that to learn all that and become a god does that mean that there's multiple gods in this like story of this theory i don't remember exactly i know i read the story a long time ago or was it that the guy that created you was also you and he was explaining it to a version of himself that was helping him experience everything the manner in which these celebrities get initiated into the illuminati is so obvious it's right in front of your face throughout the years people have noticed high profile celebrities suddenly stepping out with a black eye out of nowhere with no good explanation for it or a goofy explanation for it these are people with very high security who are put in no danger situations ever politicians religious leaders the pope the president the biggest stars in the world this is all a part of the conspiracy theory called the black eye club where these black eyes are part of the initiation ritual for them to join the evil illuminati and as the saying goes the eyes are the window to the soul so if you wanted to take someone soul it would be through their eyes so in this ritual called soul scalping these famous people's souls are violently taken from their bodies through their eyes in some manner that leaves them bruised and have you noticed of all these celebrities they're all coincidentally bruised only on their left eye which could be a reference to the left eye of Horus, which is a symbol frequently flashed in pop culture and have you ever noticed that all these illuminati hand symbols are over their eyes I'm going to tell you which celebrity just stepped out with a black eye, but before I do, make sure you follow so you finally know the craziest conspiracy theories about each of these celebrities and request who you want to see next. 
Doja Cat just stepped out with the black eye multiple times around the same time there were rumors of her joining the Illuminati and having an eyes wide shut themed birthday party. She claimed the black eye was just makeup to help her achieve a more creepy aesthetic. And everyone at that party had to wear an eye covering that day, so maybe Doja adding makeup to hers was hiding it in plain sight. Okay, so I just want to let you know, since the start of this channel, I've had a few people make comments saying I'm like planted opposition, right? Like I'm I'm like I was I was put here to deny things um, or accept other things. Dude, I'm just a I'm just a dude who likes these videos that decided to record myself watching them, right? Uh, <laughs> that's really all this is, man. Um, but on that note, I do train mixed martial arts and I am right-handed, which means my lead hand and my lead side is my left. So if you ever see me with a black eye, it's because I was sparring <laughs> and I got my ass kicked. That being said, uh, this is a pretty wild fucking theory. Uh, and I wouldn't put it past any of this. I don't know, let me know what you think. <laughs> the Loch Ness Monster is actually real. Yes, you heard that right. Everyone heard about the Loch Ness Monster and its existence in the past. But what if I told you he still exists today? In 2022, a man named Jamarcus Dorothy decided to embark on a mission to discover the truth about the existence of the Loch Ness Monster. He rented a large boat and loaded it with equipment to survive for two months in the sea. From there, Jamarcus explored for weeks without seeing anything. However, after 36 days of sailing, he spotted what appeared to be a giant monster in the water. As he approached, he realized just how large that monster was and came to the conclusion that what he saw was the Loch Ness Monster. Jamarcus then decided to record the moment and posted the video online when he came home. The video was soon taken down and Jamarcus Dorothy was reported missing by his relative. Luckily, some people managed to save the video. Subscribe and send to a friend for part two to see the footage. I always thought the Loch Ness Monster was a dinosaur. You know, I, I, I think I think that because that's what my mom used to tell me uh, growing up. <laughs> my mom is also very into conspiracy theories. Um, hi, mom. I mean, that was kind of always a hypothesis, right? Back then, there wasn't like, you know, before the internet was a thing. Like, there wasn't a lot of information about any of this, right? It was just like certain things like the Bermuda Triangle, like things that were in the tabloids. You know, Bermuda Triangle, Loch Ness Monster, Bigfoot, uh, not much else, right, outside of all that stuff. So, when we would discuss these, we would rationalize them based off information we had. Like, Loch Ness Monster, oh, it's probably just a dinosaur that survived, right? Oh, Bigfoot is probably a, a primate that, you know... Um, maybe just didn't evolve all the way into a human. So we used to talk about stuff all the time growing up, but now that we have all this information, you know, on the internet and stuff, um, we, we can kind of like stretch out our, our theories, right? We have, we have a lot more that we can uh, incorporate into these theories to try to figure this stuff out. Loch Ness Monster, dinosaur, still. The argument for algorithms is that it helps us find what we want to see and caters to our likes and dislikes. That doesn't sound so bad, right? But I don't buy that for a second because for years and years, the argument was that different algorithms for different people don't exist. It isn't real. What are you talking about? Well, years later, with overwhelming evidence to prove that algorithms do exist, now it's widely accepted as a real thing and spun as a positive. But that isn't necessarily true either. The algorithm is there to keep you engaged and hooked on websites and apps for longer, to accurately collect your likes and dislikes, and do whatever it takes to keep your eyes glued to the screen and your wallet spending money. If you linger too long on a certain thread or a video, the algorithm will recommend more like it. If you argue online, the algorithm will find and create more incendiary posts to rile you up and keep you engaged. Look at Facebook. It's a well of content thrown at you just to rile you up and support your pre-existing beliefs. Are you mad about this? Well, here is more stuff to get mad about. Are you worried about this? Well, here are more things to worry about. So how much of the internet is fake? Studies suggest that less than 60% of web traffic is human. That's right, 60%. According to researchers, some years, a healthy majority of them are mostly bots. For a period of time in 2013, the New York Times reported that half of YouTube traffic was bots masquerading as people, a portion so high that employees feared an inflection point would happen meaning YouTube systems for detecting fraudulent traffic would begin to regard bot traffic as real and human traffic as fake. They even have a name for this hypothetical event. It's called the inversion. Remember, this was all the way back in 2013. So it's not a stretch in the slightest to assume that the threshold of bot traffic has been met and surpassed, meaning that the internet is, for the most part, filled with non-living voices. But let's get even deeper and more disturbing. DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, is a research and development agency of the United States Department of Defense and is responsible for the development of emerging technologies for use by the military. DARPA had a program called LifeLog, and its goal was exactly that, to log one's entire life. LifeLog aimed to compile a massive electronic database of every activity and relationship a person engages in. This was to include credit card purchases, websites visited, the content of telephone calls and emails sent and received, instant messages sent and received, 
books and magazines read, television viewing habits and radio selections. The point of collecting all of this data on everyone was to identify preferences, plans, goals, and markers of intentionality. Another of DARPA's goals for LifeLog had a predictive function. It sought to infer the user's routines, habits, and relationships with other people, organizations, places, and objects, and to exploit these patterns to ease its task. Sounds absolutely terrifying, correct? Well, lucky for us, it was shut down February 4th, 2004, over criticism from civil libertarians concerning the privacy implications of such a system. Interestingly, though, on that exact same day, February 4th, 2004, a small and little-known website at the time launched called Facebook. No, I'm not joking. Not in the slightest. The exact same day that they shut down LifeLog, Facebook started. Lucky for us, though, back in 2020, on Twitter, the official DARPA account came out to reassure people that LifeLog and Facebook have absolutely nothing to do with each other. Even though certain employees of LifeLog went to work at Facebook, it's nothing to worry about. Right. All right, I'm just going to come out and say that in these kind of situations, there's no such thing as a coincidence. I, I think that we, we've we reached that point to where we can say things like that, there's, there's no fucking way <laughs> that was a coincidence, right? Let me know what you think. Did the real life Men in Black actually get Dan Aykroyd's show on UFOs canceled? Check this out. In 2002, Dan Aykroyd was filming a brand new UFO show called Out There for the Sci-Fi Channel. When he went outside to have a cigarette break and to answer a phone call, but at that very moment, something very strange happened. So according to Dan, he went outside to smoke a cigarette and answer a phone call when he noticed a big black car roll up with two guys inside of it all in black. He was still on the phone when he saw that one of the guys got out of the car and was glaring at him. He looked away for one second and when Dan looked back, not only was the man in black gone, but the entire car was gone as well. Now this all happened only in a matter of seconds, and there's no way that car would have disappeared that fast out of his line of sight without Dan seeing it at some point. Now here's the creepy part. According to Dan, it was only hours later where he found out his show was being cancelled and they had to stop filming immediately. So what do you think? Was the famous Ghostbuster actually silenced by the real men in black? Hey, the truth is out there. Well that's disappointing, uh, cause I love Dan Aykroyd. He's awesome. I love the Ghostbusters. And that show sounds like it probably would have been awesome, dude. I've, I've listened to a lot of stories of Dan Aykroyd. Like, I guess his dad was like a ghost hunter or, or something. I'm her's grandpa. I'm definitely butchering this this information. I'll correct it later. Or you can look it up. But I just know like his family is like has been like involved in like paranormal and conspiracy theories. Like I'm pretty sure his whole life. So he's super informed, right, on it. He's very knowledgeable. So that show probably would have been amazing. That's very unfortunate that it got cancelled. Only recently in 2015, you had the Smithsonian Institute openly admit in court that they had been destroying bones of giants since the early 20th century. These were skeletons reaching between 6 to 12 feet in height and would be a key part to understanding our true evolution as a species. There has no doubt been a major cover-up from major Western archaeological institutions and a manipulation to suppress discoveries and findings. So the question we ask is why is it being suppressed? Why is our history trying to be erased? I think, I think honestly it just comes down to them. The only stuff they're going to tell us about are things that benefit them, like Aliens and Project Blue Beam, you know, like giants probably wouldn't benefit them if they told us about giants. I mean, I, I think the giants would just be like one more thing for us to bug them about more information for, right? So they're just not even trying that. At least with the the aliens, they can utilize that to benefit in some way with like Project Blue Beam, like I said. So uh, I think that's the only reason why they're telling us about that stuff. But man, I would love to know if there are giants. Go well, lie down. It's okay. Lie down. Stay. Been doing this all morning and I don't have time for this today. Stop. Hey buddy. We I don't I got too much going on. You gotta cut it out. Oh shit. Okay. I'm just gonna set it up with paper towels and we'll just let the phone roll. I asked it, you gotta go, or you gotta go downstairs, or something, wherever you're gonna go, you gotta go. Calm down. He's okay. Please, not today. Just, holy cow. Oh my god. Oh my god. Little buddy.
Nope. Hell nope. Fuck nope. Nope. No. He thought he Fuck no, dude. Hell no. Hell fuck. Hell no. Dude, I don't care. I don't care if it's a sweet old lady ghost, a little kid, a baby, fucking whatever, dude. There's no way. Absolutely not. There's n there's nothing that can make me be okay with being in a situation like that. And uh, back in 1993, a German robotics engineer, Rudolf Gantenbrink, sent a little robot up that shaft. 165 feet up the shaft, the robot came to this door with two metal handles. Rudolf Gantenbrink was immediately banned from doing any further work in Egypt and was sent away. Uh, the project was taken over by the Egyptian government. Uh, some years later, uh, Zahi, Zahi Hawass um, sent another robot up the shaft with a mission to drill through that door and find out what was on the other side. There we go, there's the drill, there's the door, there's the hole that they made. You know what they found on the other side? A space and another door. <laughs> it's like an invitation, search me. The pyramid is saying, search me, but I'm not gonna make it easy for you. You're really gonna have to figure this thing out. We still don't know what's at the end of that shaft. Man, there are a lot of theories about the pyramids of of Giza specifically, um, obviously the most popular ones, um, them being you know tombs. I guess the most accepted uh, by the mainstream archaeology. But what what do you think? Like, what do you think the pyramids are, or, or what do you even know for a fact the pyramids are? Right? Like, what's your what's your theory? What's your uh, what's your thought process on that? If you if you have some theory about the the pyramids that is kind of out of the norm, or maybe not talked about as much as like the other things, like like let me know. Let me know in the comments. Join the Discord. Let's talk about it in there. Something I would love to know. All of a sudden, on all the networks, telling three provable, damnable lies. One, they're a threat to our national security. No, but I'll tell you who it is. This covert group, they're a threat to world security, national security. Number two, that we don't know what they are. Big lie. These covert programs know that the ones that they have reverse engineered from ET materials, they know they have them. And the ones that are actually ET, they, they have them too. The other big lie is that we couldn't possibly have anything that flies like this. Well, I have an aerospace historian that has 200,000 pages of documents about these anti-gravity so-called devices we've been building prototypes for since the mid-50s. In October of 1954, we had mastered, quote, gravity control with these electromagnetic field propulsion systems. Man, that's, that's weird. That's just as surprising to hear as it is unsurprising to... <laughs> Also, just enough not like a cat for me to 
think to myself, I don't know what the fuck that was. I don't know, what do you think? Now these aliens have been given the nickname Face Peelers, and you're about to see why. This man lying on the bank of a river was victim to one of these alien attacks. And we can see some Peruvian police officers taking the leaves off that were covering his face. Now look at his head. Almost his entire face has been completely removed with what looks to be surgical level precision or greater. Now if this was some sort of movie prop, they did a good job because it looks very convincing. Also when the officer falls over you can tell that looks like the real weight of a person. But the video recording itself is also very poorly shot so the chances of a movie recording is unlikely. Dude, like the fact that like how clean the fucking skull was it's crazy man there's it's like squeaky clean like someone removed his face like precisely <laughs> it's like some fucking dexter shit uh and then just like washed it just like clorox bleached his skull that's weird it's weird to me page 50, 55 from the committee's interview with fbi employee roya demlo who you just spoke about which took place on july 17 2023 uh, in that line, she says, uh, the question was asked, okay, if someone were to leave here today, were to leave this interview and were to suggest or imply that when you said the laptop was real, that it meant that the FBI had affirmatively determined in October 2020. Yeah, I have no idea what's going on there. Zero. I have zero percent um, insight into that one. <laughs> uh, I, I've seen, I've seen things about that before i've seen that video before um but i saw someone said something about uh that i didn't notice and until someone mentioned it so i'm gonna mention it even like the when the the chick that was speaking like stuttered over her words the other broad that was uh mouthing it also stuttered it's weird man i don't know it's weird i don't know let me know what the hell you think that was i mean was that even like a, a situation where a controlled um like presentation would have even been warranted, right? Something on that level? Like, what was that What was that meeting even about? I'm Hutchinson, and what you will be seeing in this video is a widely debated and ridiculed parascientific process called the Hutchinson Effect, a scientifically unexplained phenomena that causes bowling balls to levitate, metal to blink out of existence, and milk bottles to melt. With this effect, John Hutchinson was able to levitate objects. He was even able to levitate water. He was also able to create metallic alloys that do not exist on the planet Earth. I apologize for the poor quality of these videos, but this is the best you can find on the internet. After John Hutchinson published his work, the US and Canadian military became extremely interested in his research. And after this, videos disappeared. Hutchinson stopped filming the effect and kinda went into hiding. If John Hutchinson faked these videos, why would the military take such a keen interest? Follow me for more information like this. Burger King foot lettuce. That's what... <laughs> the droning, the droning voice, man. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that's pretty wild. I guess, I guess there would be no reason for the government to even worry about it if it wasn't true, right? I mean, I could see them wanting to investigate, like, hearing about it happening... But then if it wasn't true, just going on about their way. But they also didn't call him out, like, publicly. I don't know, just him just abruptly quitting after he was approached is kind of strange, right? Like, I guess if the government would have been like, ah, he's faking, then he'd have no reason to keep faking it um, because people would know, but that didn't happen, right? So, I don't know, it makes you think. Yo, y'all heard what Bill Gates trying to do, right? Look, I want to respect TikTok community guidelines, so let me know what y'all think in the comments about this. Bill Gates and other investors are betting Kadama Systems can reduce carbon dioxide in the air by chopping down and burying trees, which has raised $6.6 .6 million in seed funding from Bill Gates' Breakthrough Energy and others. Scientists say burying trees can reduce global warming as well. I don't know where they find these scientists, by the way. To help address the problem, the U.S. Forest Services aims to thin out 70 million acres of western forests, mostly in California over the next decade, extracting more than 1 billion tons of bone-dried biomass. Normally when you cut down trees, when you're a lumberjack, when you have a lumber company, you're selling the lumber to build houses, people buying from Home Depot or whatever. They're arguing that 
they want to rather than sell the timber take all that wood and just bury it because they're saying that that is a better solution and so in other words this is a business because they're getting money to create carbon offsets and this is what Bill Gates is financing just another good idea from good old Mr. Bill Gates right <laughs> Jesus Christ man if you have any more information on that, it was kind of hard to understand exactly what they were saying the um, the purpose of burying the trees was going to solve, I guess, or, or combat. Uh, if you could let me know in the comments, I would appreciate you because, um, yeah, that, that doesn't sound good. A creeping underground fire plaguing a near-empty town haunted by its terrifying past. It's not just the plot of Silent Hill. It's also the story of Centralia, Pennsylvania. Some elements of Centralia's founding are just as dark as its end. The town's founder was killed by an Irish secret society in 1868, and the men responsible were later hanged. There's even a legend that a Catholic priest cursed the land after members of the same gang attacked him. Most of the local coal mines ceased operation around 1960, and many were left abandoned. This led to disaster when a fire in the town dump transferred to the labyrinth of coal mines that snaked beneath the town. The fire spread underground over the next few decades, but people were unaware of the problem. It came to light when a gas station owner checked his underground tanks and found that the gas was actually scorching hot. Next, a 12-year-old boy nearly died when a sinkhole opened in his yard, spewing carbon monoxide. Soon after, the government bought out most of the residents, but others refused to leave. Eventually, the government invoked eminent domain, and the remaining residents were allowed to stay until they died. At its peak, Centralia's population was nearly 2,800. In 2017, just five people remained. I don't know. I'm pretty fascinated by the idea of ghost towns, right? Not Obviously not because they're haunted, obviously. Uh, but just like, I don't know, the, the eeriness, right? The uncanniness of just like a completely just desolate place it just i don't know it's always intrigued me so like i love playing like fallout and the fallout games and stuff post-apocalyptic stuff and silent hill is also my favorite horror movie as well it has been for years it's just it's like the movie that uh i always tell people to watch or i always put it on for them if they've never seen it because i think it's just so creepy in its own in its own way outside vatican conspiracy theories one, the Vatican is hiding evidence of extraterrestrial life. The Vatican has knowledge of alien life and is actively covering up evidence to maintain its power and control over the public. One of the main pieces of evidence cited is a statement made by the former director of the Vatican Observatory, Father Jose Gabriel Funes, in 2008. He suggested that the discovery of extraterrestrial life would not contradict the Catholic faith, and that aliens could even be considered brothers in a theological sense. 2. The Vatican has a secret archive containing evidence of historical cover-ups. The Vatican's secret archive, which is not open to the public, contains evidence of historical events that the Church has actively covered up, such as the existence of Jesus' descendants, the true nature of the Inquisition, and the Church's role in Nazi war crimes, and lost artifacts or relics, such as the Holy Grail or the Ark of the Covenant. 3. The Vatican has ties to the Illuminati. The Vatican is secretly working with the Illuminati, a supposed secret society that aims to control world events and governments. Some believe that the Vatican is the true power behind the Illuminati and uses it to control the world. Others say the Black Pope, the superior general of the Society of Jesus, the head of the Jesuit order, is controlling governments, financial institutions, and other organizations behind the scenes. 4. The Vatican is hiding evidence of time travel. The Vatican has access to time travel technology and is using it to manipulate historical events and maintain its power via a device called the chronovisor. The chronovisor is often attributed to an Italian priest and scientist named Father Pellegrino Ernetti, who claimed to have invented the device in the 1950s. Ernetti claimed that the chronovisor was based on principles of quantum mechanics, and was able to detect and decode the residual electromagnetic radiation left behind by past events. 5. The Vatican is hiding the true identity of the Antichrist. The Vatican is hiding the true identity of the Antichrist, a figure from Christian theology who is believed to be the embodiment of evil and a harbinger of the end times. Some proponents of this theory believe that the Antichrist is actually a high-ranking member of the Vatican or an influential figure in the world. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. The Vatican is definitely hiding some shit. It's uh, like the world's biggest cult, right? <laughs> the Catholic Church. I've heard about the Chronovisor, but I, I uh, don't remember too much about it. So let's watch a video about that. 
Let's, let's see if we can find one. The Vatican doesn't want you to know about this time device. In 2002, a book was released by a man named Francois Brun that revealed that time travel may already be possible. Well, you see, he claimed that in the 1950s, 12 world-renowned scientists actually cracked the code on time travel with the ability of harnessing electromagnetic sound waves that had been emitted in the past. He went on to show further proof with a photograph of Jesus' actual crucifixion. However, when questioned about the whereabouts of the device, he mentioned that the Vatican came in and confiscated it, and denying that anything of the sort ever existed. Interestingly enough, in 1988, the Vatican passed a law stating that anyone caught in possession of a device with time travel capabilities will be excommunicated. If the chronovisor was not real, then why was a law such as this passed? Honestly, what easier way to gain control of the world than to be able to go back in time? But I guess it's just viewing time, right? It's not like going back and it's not going to be like a butterfly effect where they go back in time. But, I mean, still, I feel like with something like that, you have like an ultimate form of power to be able to, to see events and uh, just endless knowledge, right? And I think I guess with endless knowledge comes, you know, endless power if you know how to harness it and um, utilize it properly, right? So that would make sense. Where's my VR headset? I want to watch dinosaurs. In the Bible, the story of Baal refers to the presence of false gods worshipped by the Canaanites and other neighboring nations. Baal was one of the prominent gods worshipped in ancient times. The worship of Baal involved rituals, sacrifices, and the belief that Baal was the god of fertility, rain, and agricultural abundance. The Israelites, under the influence of their neighboring cultures, sometimes fell into the practice of worshipping Baal and other false gods forsaking their covenant with the true God. This led to God's displeasure and warnings through his prophets, including Elijah and others, to turn away from idolatry and return to him alone. The story of Baal serves as a reminder of the spiritual challenges faced by the Israelites in remaining faithful to their covenant with God. It underscores the importance of staying devoted to the true God and not being swayed by the allure of false gods and practices. The narrative highlights the consequences of idol worship and the need for repentance and restoration to a right relationship with God. This is the end of this episode. Follow for more content. What do you think of all this uh, Balenciaga stuff? I know it's kind of after the fact. Uh, I wasn't around when uh, all that was kind of going on, right? My channel wasn't uh, wasn't live yet. But as far as incorporating like these uh, like ancient, you know, gods or or demons or or whatever all these these uh, beings are uh, incorporating them in like mainstream art and like fashion and, and entertainment and stuff like what are your thoughts on that because I'm curious because I don't know have you heard of the yellow book it's a top secret government document that supposedly contains information about extraterrestrial life according to the conspiracy theory the Yellow Book was first discovered in 1961 by a U.S. Air Force officer who was tasked with retrieving crashed UFOs. The book allegedly contains detailed information about alien species, their technology, and their history with humanity. Conspiracy theorists claim that only a select few high-ranking officials in the government have access to the Yellow Book because of its sensitive and confidential nature. So, what do you think? Is the government covering up the existence of extraterrestrial life and hiding the truth in the yellow book? Let me know in the comments below. Oh yeah, dude. Of course they're covering up things, dude. I mean, if something like that was gifted to humans by an alien species with like just information on like technology and just everything, just basically anything we could think of, whoever found that book would keep that shit and not even share it with other nations. Of course they would. If American government found that, they would not be sharing it with Russia or China or anybody else, and vice versa. So, of course, they're going to keep it a secret. Of course they are. 